what I'm about to tell you is possibly one of the most graphic and horrendous scenes in American history. You have been warned. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? In this next chapter, I'll be taking you down south to the French Quarter of New Orleans, Louisiana. Let's explore one of the most haunted locations in the entire city, the LaLaurie House. In 1832, Dr. Louis LaLaurie and his wife Delphine moved into their beautiful mansion at 1140 Royal Street. The house was made for extravagant parties and elite social gatherings. Madame LaLaurie was considered one of the most intelligent and beautiful women in the entire city. Every woman wanted to be her. But as beautiful as she was on the outside, people were beginning to suspect that something ugly was going on behind closed doors. Like most wealthy families during that time, the LaLauries owned slaves. They prepared the meals and made the fancy parties possible. But rumors began to stir. Madam's slaves seem to come and go quite often, don't you think? What do you mean? Look around. Do any of these workers look familiar to you? It seems like she changes them so often. Huh, I wonder why that is. Suspicions have been rising, but with no proof to back any of them up until one day when a neighbor was climbing her stairs. She heard a scream coming from the LaLaurie house and looked over to see Madam chasing a little girl with a whip. There was nothing she could do but watch in horror as the little girl climbed to the rooftop with Madam following close behind. With nowhere to go, the little girl jumped. Even though slaves were barely considered human back in those times, there were still laws that prohibited exceptionally cruel treatment. So the neighbor called the authorities who had the LaLaurie's slaves impounded and sold at an auction. But Madam was sneaky. She arranged for her relatives to buy her workers and sell them back to her. After that incident, Madam's reputation began to change. People were no longer eager to attend the parties at their house, nor even interact with the family. Eventually, they were alienated by the Creole society. And in 1834, things would only get worse. The madam kept her cook chained to the kitchen by her ankle. For whatever reason, madam had threatened to take her to the upstairs room. This terrified the cook. Whenever anyone went up to that room, they never came back. The cook decided she would rather die by her own hand than to suffer by madam LaLaurie's, so she set the kitchen on fire. It spread throughout the entire house and not a part of the mansion was left unscathed. Neighbors came rushing over to help fight the flames, but after the smoke had cleared, they made a horrific discovery in the attic. What I'm about to tell you is possibly one of the most graphic and horrendous scenes in American history. You have been warned. The fire had burned down the door to reveal the upstairs room filled with dozens of naked slaves. Some were strapped to what looked like an operating table. A few were chained to the wall. Others were crouched in small cages. One woman had her stomach slit open and her intestines wrapped around her waist like a cruel corset. Another woman's mouth was sewn shut after first having been filled with animal feces. A man had a hole drilled into his head with a stick inserted, presumably used to stir his brain. Most of them had been dead for a long time and some were unfortunately not. Madam and her husband were both doctors and some theorized that they were practicing risky medical operations on their slaves but the inhumane condition that they were in suggests that their reasons were less medical and purely sadistic. After the news of the LaLaurie's torture room spread across the city, a mob ransacked their mansion and destroyed every last bit of property they owned. They even tore up the backyard, where they discovered dozens of buried skeletons, including that of a small child, presumably the young slave who jumped off the roof. The mob chased the LaLaurie's out of town, and that was the last anyone had ever seen of them. Ever since that day, that house has had trouble getting tenants to stay. Residents claimed to hear constant sounds of wailing. Children said they were chased by a woman with a whip. Year after year, the house would be bought just to be resold again. Today, the mansion is owned by an oil tycoon who doesn't allow anyone inside. I wonder what he's hiding. Like this video if it gave you the chills, and don't forget to subscribe to Snarls and check out our other videos. And if you dare to follow me, my links are in the description below. Until next time, sweet dreams.